Thank you so much to the Bridges family for taking the time to come here today. We come to not only honor your father, but to remember him. And I want to tell you some Harry and Dave stories. Brothers and sisters, years ago, when Dave Arian was so active in the ILWU, and he was, of course, until the day he died, he came to understand that the officers of the LWU in these days and times were so busy administering the contract and dealing with the employers that they didn't really have time to do all the things that needed to be done on so many other fronts. So in 1993, when Dave was international president and Sean, his son, so brilliantly helped with so many things, Dave and Sean conceptualized the Harry Bridges Institute. And the reason it was called the Harry Bridges Institute was to institutionalize the principles that Harry stood for. And those principles were international solidarity, social justice and equality, union democracy, and the right of workers to organize in free trade unions. That's what Harry stood for. And I don't know, I know there are many pensioners here. They'll know what I'm talking about. But for the folks that don't, some of my very, very favorite memories of Harry Bridges were when Harry talked about how important it was for the union to take a position on World War II and not shipping, not handling steel that was bound for Japan. And when people said, who are you to get involved in international affairs? Harry's response was, international affairs are far too important to be left to the politicians. The working people need to be heard. And that's what Harry stood for. Now, of course, we're here to honor Harry and I'm happy to say to also remember Dave and his contributions. But the old timers here will know, and I'm looking particularly at Tony Salcedo, front seat, somebody who was on the other side of Dave and many issues, Bruce Krieger, longstanding friend. Let me tell you that in the 70s, there was no such thing as the Harry and Dave big time friendship. Dave was on the other side. He thought Harry was dead wrong. And you know what he was thought he was dead wrong about? M&M. And for those that don't know, mechanization and modernization. And here we are again today talking about the same things that Harry and Dave talked about. And just like the old timers remember that there was many a time Dave hit the mic to criticize Harry, there's many a time today when union leaders may have different opinions, and that's fine. That's called democracy. And that's what Harry stood for, union democracy, different opinions. Now, some of you may have noted the last couple of weeks that we have different opinions on the Harbor Commission, too. <laughs> but that is not going to keep us from moving forward. Because what we need to do when we move forward is say, OK, the LWU negotiates with the employer. They're going to take care of the contract. But now, as a community, we have to look at what happens to the rest of us. What happens to the future of work in this community? And that's where all of us come in. Because as Harry said, those issues are far, more impor far too important to leave to the mayor, to leave to the city council, or to leave to the Harbor Commission. We need to hear from you. Yep. Now, I want to talk about the HBI and its role in this statute. Dave, over the years, made his peace with Harry. And for those that may be on different sides of the fence today, let me tell you, it didn't take that many years. The M&M contract and the big strike was in the early 70s. By 1978, 
Harry asked Dave to be his representative at an international peace conference in Vienna. So obviously, Harry and Dave mended their fences. And we know that that's going to happen today. And the reason it's going to happen today is because there is one side, as Mike so aptly said, this is a battle against capital. And the people that are on one side got to understand, we're all in this together. The enemy isn't each other. There's a bigger enemy, the 1%. And the enemy isn't the Port of LA. And it isn't the Harbor Commission. The enemy is these forces that want to take work away from all of us. Whether you're a longshoreman, a truck driver, a clerk at Target, that's what we're going to stand up for. So Dave understood this. And in his last days, and we were fortunate that there were four or five months when Dave was still able to talk to us, he said, here's what I want done with the Harry Bridges Institute. And I look at this audience, and you are absolutely, the pensioners are, have always been the core of what kept the Harry Bridges Institute going. When there were hassles at the International, it was the pensioners that backed us up. So many, many years ago, Dave and I determined that we wanted a separate fund within the Harry Bridges Institute. And Dave being, above all else, loyal and loving to his family, wanted to start something called the Honest Lou and Rosarian Fund. And at the time Dave passed, there was about $80,000, $90,000 left in that fund. And Dave's final wishes were, I want to do two things. I want to continue the project, Great Unions Make Great Families, a video history of not individuals in the Longshore Union, but families and what happened to those families as a result of union membership. But the other thing he wanted to do was see this statute come to fruition. And his last wishes were that $50,000 from the Harry Bridges Institute and really the Honest Lou and Rosarian Fund be contributed for this statute. So we are so happy we were able to make that come true. We are thrilled you could be here with us today. I hope that whoever comes into this hall will remember what this statute stands for, and they won't stop fighting for the principles that Harry stood for and others have talked about today. Thank you.